another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Incident of the Loud Planet. Our story opens at Earth Control on a routine day. The dispatchers are about to okay a Venus Junction space freighter launch. Venus Junction, Venus Junction, this is Earth Control, over. Earth Control, this is Venus Junction, go ahead. Here's your party, Chief. Space Freighter 005, this is Earth Control. Request granted. Launch your cargo capsule on orbit 2.76. Earth Control, this is Space Freighter 005, roger. Releasing cargo on orbit 2.76, over. Hey, what's this? Oh, no, it couldn't be. Master Control. Master Control, this is Station 7. Alert. This is Master Control. What's wrong, Bill? I'm recording red alert in Sector 045. Over. Station 7, red alert. Sector 045. Roger. Hang on, Bill. This is Master Control. Put me through to the Chief. This is an emergency. Come in, Earth Control. What's up? Disturbance in Sector 045, Chief. Source unidentified. It's jamming communications. Check all stations and verify. And move, man. Check. All stations, stand by for fix on unidentified signal and report. Roger, Master Control. a bite of your lunch yet. How long do you think you could keep this up without making yourself sick? You've got to eat. I'll eat, Mom. I, I'm just not hungry yet. Oh, dear. I'm okay, Mom. Just leave me alone, please. No, Johnny, I won't. It's high time we put a stop to this. I've put up with this beep, beep, beep of your equipment every day for three years now while you've searched the skies for your father. Johnny, it's no use. He's gone. He's not coming back. He is, too. I'm going to find him if it takes all my life. Don't stop me, Mom. Someday I'm going to find that wild planet. It has to come back. It has to. Oh, Johnny, dear, it's just no use. Oh, how I've prayed that... Mom! Mom, that's it. I found it. Look, it's the wild planet. We found Dad. Oh, Johnny... Johnny, do something! Yahoo! You know it! I'll peek the game! Hit the bearing computer and recorder! Uh, and now what? That's it! In a minute, we'll know the position and speed of the planet Sonics, and Earth Space Control can send searchers after it. I did it, Mom! I did it! I produced an element that can't be found any place on Earth! But, Chief, we put the data through the analyzer, and it's unable to locate the source. Put me through to the Starduster. It's operating in that area. Maybe we can get some missing data from the Space Angel. Okay, Chief. Stand by. Urgent signal from Master Control, Scott. It must be the Chief. Right, Crystal. Master Control, this is the Starduster. Go ahead, Chief. Scott. There's a strange signal coming from the direction of your patrol area. Have you seen anything? Sure have, Chief. And our wave detector registers sonite. And it's getting stronger. Sonite? Are you sure? Afraid so, Chief. We haven't had a blast yet. Here it comes! Scott! Scott! Are you all right? So far, Chief, but... Hey, Skipper, our automatic guidance system is knocked out. We're coming apart at the sea. She, she's out of control. Where can the mysterious sonite signal be coming from? Will the space dart be able to escape its force? 
Be sure and see the next exciting episode of Space Angel. Last off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Incident of the Loud Planet. Remember last time, Johnny transmitted a signal into space and was receiving an answer when Scott and his crew were suddenly thrown out of control by a mysterious sonite signal. Scott, we're spinning! What's happening, Scott? When we blasted into that sonite belt, it threw us out of control. And when I chopped off the power, the sonite waves took over and are pulling us along in their wake. Hmm. Now we're churning along with it like a chip of wood on a gigantic wave. Eh, Skipper? But how do we get out of this? Just hang on to your hats. It's going to be quite a jolt. Try to strap yourselves in now. This is it. Right, Skipper. All okay here, my lad. Let her rip. Going to pour on all the coal she could take and blast free. We hope. on my middle. That's enough of that for one day. Taurus, you're just getting old. Earth Control. Earth Control, this is Starduster. Over. Starduster, this is Earth Control. Go ahead. Earth Control, this is Starduster. Clear pad for landing. Priority one. Roger, Starduster. I'll notify the chief. Take pad three. This is Master Control. Space Angel just landed in the Starduster. Splendid, Master Control. Send the Space Angel right in. Yes, sir. And call Dr. Mace for an immediate conference. Dr. Mace. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. My viewer was knocked out and I never did get a glimpse of the asteroid. The sonite wave at that point was two space units across, Professor Mace. Hmm. From that angle, I would say the sonite waves must have been transmitted from Earth. The sonite asteroid only magnified them and bounced them back. Then sonite transmission could knock out any spacecraft that got into the path of its transmission? Not the path of transmission, Scott. It's the bounce back wave from the greater source of sonite that is dangerous. That's why we've got to find out who, when, where, what is broadcasting this thing. We're running the recorded data through now. We'll know exactly where it's coming from in a minute. Uh, <clears throat> come in. Pardon me, Chief. There's a young boy out here who says he's been broadcasting Sonite. I thought you'd like to talk to him. Would I? I'll say I would. Send him in here. Your computer pinpoints the Sonite transmission in the 1200 block on Pine Street, right here in the city. <coughs> and where do you live, young man? Uh, 1240 Pine Street, sir. Young man, don't you know that transmitting Sonite is against the law? Yes, sir, but... Do you know you almost killed the Space Angel? No, Chief, don't be so tough on him. It was the only way to locate the wild planet Sonex through harmonic response. And, and my dad was lost on it over three years ago, and I found it. I have the computer tape, and, and... Wait a minute. Slow down. The boy makes sense. The planet Sonex was in this area three years ago. And Professor Kendall, who went out to survey it, has never returned. Scott, this looks like a job for the Space Angel. Oh, boy, the Space Angel. 
Roger, Chief. I'll, uh, I'll notify the Space Angel to have the Starduster ready for blastoff first thing in the morning. Will Scott find the planet Sonex? Can Professor Kendall still be alive? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel. Another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Incident of the Loud Planet. Remember last time, Johnny was picked up by the space control for transmitting sonite, which was interfering with space travel lanes. Johnny pointed out that he believes through harmonic response, he's discovered the missing planet Sonex. The chief then ordered Scott to blast off and go in search of the wild planet Sonex on which Johnny's dad has been lost. Scott, is the Starduster all ready to blast off on schedule? Ready, willing, and able, sir. Crystal's helping Professor Mace check out our new tracking gear, and Taurus is directing the loading of supplies. Where's the Space Angel? Can I meet the Space Angel? <coughs> uh, no, Johnny, he, he's uh, already on board. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can't get you two together when we get back. You're going along too, huh, Mr. Scott? <laughs> You bet, Johnny. Uh, I'll be taking along. Then will you tell him I know he can find my dad? I'm counting on the Space Angel. I'm sure the Space Angel will do his very best, Johnny. Thank you, Mr. Scott, sir. Okay if I go down and look over the Starduster? Sure, Johnny. Go ahead. Launching crew, report to Platform 3. Launching crew. That kid sharp, Scott. Could be he'll catch on that you're the Space Angel. I know, Chief. I'd better get aboard before he returns and fires more questions at me. Okay, Scott. Good luck, and stay in close contact, my friend. All right, Chief. All set, kids? Ready when you are. Okay here, Skipper. Hey, okay, Scott. Space Control. Space Control. This is Starduster. Ready for countdown. Over. Roger, Starduster. Ready for countdown. Clear launching station three of all equipment and personnel. Emergency vehicles. Stand by. Eight, seven. Atomic engine activator. Atomic engine activator, go. Six, five. Trajectory angle. Four, three. Three point zero five, go. Two, one, zero. Lift off. Free of Earth's gravity, I'll switch over to our own gyro gravity equalizer. Roger, Taurus. Trajectory looks very good, Scott. Roger, Crystal. We're in free flight. How's the new Sonite tracking equipment working, Chris? All okay. I'm just checking the present position of the Sonite asteroid. Hey, Taurus. Yes, Skipper? My radiation indicator isn't working. Better go left and check the shielding. I skip her right away. Probably a resistor out. What? What? What the? Well, I'll be. What the? Here. Hey, Skipper, I found a mouse in the machinery. Johnny Kendall, what are you doing here? I sneaked aboard while they were loading the sonite tracking equipment. How on earth did you survive the blast off? I strapped myself to the computer rack. That's why your indicator wasn't working, Skipper. Hey, where's the space angel? Well, uh, um... Uh... You see, lad, he's, uh, uh... Johnny, I suppose we'll have to take you into our confidence. And trust you'll never tell anyone. I'm the space angel. Gee! Now, as long as you're here, we have no choice but to take you along. Taurus, see if you can rig up a spacesuit for our new crew member, Johnny Kendall. Sector 5. Oh, 
won't be long now. Scott, the alarm. We're registering Sonite. There it is. The Sonite planet. The Sonite planet. Will they find Professor Kendall? Be sure to see the next exciting episode of Space Angels. another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Incident of the Loud Planet. You remember last time, Johnny had stowed away on the space dart. Scott had gone too far to turn back. So agreed to take Johnny along on their search for the Sonite Planet and Johnny's dad, Professor Kendall. It certainly looks evil enough, Skipper. It looks completely dead. How could anyone survive on such a place? If anybody could, it would be your father, Johnny. He's a very capable man. Aye, laddie. I read one of his books on how to survive in hostile environments. Gravity reading 0 0.015. Moving up fast, Scott. Right, Chris. We'll drop into orbit now and survey this planetoid. Taurus, get on the analyzer and check for atmosphere content. Aye, Skipper. Crystal, check the radiation and ground conditions, please. Right, Scott. Aren't we going to land, sir? Not until we take a look around, Johnny. We have to know what we're getting into. Unidentified spacecraft approaching. Your Highness, we have an alert. Unidentified spacecraft coming in on low approach. Well, General, shall we go see who our unexpected visitor is? Of course, Your Highness. Who knows, but we may fall heir to another youthful prize. <laughs> Safe enough. Let's drop down and drag the area. Atmosphere readings, Taurus? Atmosphere negligible, Skipper. Geiger reading in the green. Safe gravity, 0 0.094 Gs. Very good. They're coming closer now, Your Highness. Hmm. Does the stranger have any markings, General? It, it, Your Highness, it looks like the Space Angel ship. <gasps> the Space Angel. I might have known. Your Highness, the tower. They'll spot the sonar transmission tower. Of course they will, you fool. We'll just prepare a little surprise reception for the space angel. <laughs> Why, of course, your highness. Sure hope my dad's down there. Hi, lad. Hey, look. Was that a tower? Out here in the middle of nowhere? Hey, Taurus. Check astern. Hi, Skipper. Jump and Jupiter, it's a tower, all right. And there's smoke coming up near it. Then it must be coming from an underground installation. Oh, boy. Dad must be there. He's alive. He must be alive. Chances are pretty good, Johnny. Stand by, crew. We're coming about for a landing.
standing legs extended. Steady power. Steady. Power steady. Ready for touchdown. That space angel is such a fool. Is everything in readiness for his surprise, General? Everything, Your Highness. <laughs> The space angel will get the surprise reception he deserves. What kind of a surprise has the queen for the space angel? Will Scott fall into their trap? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel. Another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of Incident of the Loud Planet. Remember last time, Scott, Crystal, Taurus, and Johnny saw a sonite tower on the mysterious planet. Unbeknown to Scott, Queen Zora and her henchman, the General, have spotted the Space Angel. Open outer panel. Outer panel opening. How's the suit fit, Johnny? Very comfortable, sir. Mr. Taurus is a genius. Hey, okay here then, Crystal. The brave fool is opening the hatchway already. It is the Space Angel, all right. And a small figure. They're headed straight for our sonite tower. Checking communications, Crystal. Loud and clear, Scott. Look, Johnny, there's a door in the main building just to the right of the tower. I can see it, sir. Let us accommodate our friends, General. Open the sonite tower door. Yes, Your Highness. Look, sir, the door. Scott, be careful. Looks like somebody is inviting us in. Scott. Oh, our friends are trying to decide whether or not they should enter our trap. Are you ready, General? Most certainly, Your Highness. Okay, Johnny, this is it. Stick close to me. a strange generator room, sir. Yeah, Johnny. You can bet somebody's around opening and closing doors for us. It's the evil Queen Zora. I thought she was dead. I am so sorry to disappoint you, Space Angel. But now you see it is you who will be destroyed. Is my father, Professor Kendall, here? Professor Kendall is helping us process sonite so that we can control the universe. That's not true! That's not true! My father would never help you! Not willingly, I will admit. <laughs> but we have had ways of persuading the good professor since he fell into our trap three years ago. You see, Space Angel, we have prepared sonite capsules so we can put them in orbit around all inhabited planets. And you, Space Angel, and your little friend have brought us the means to deliver them. Your spaceship, the Starduster. The Starduster? I see. If the people of the universe refuse to pay you tribute, you'll activate the Sonite. Of course. I will rule the universe. I want to see my father. Of course, little man. General, send the professor to join his son. We have no further use for him. In what fashion do you intend to eliminate us, your royal highness? You are standing directly over a sonite deposit. I need only throw this switch. And you will be shattered as the waves pass through you to the tower above. Professor Kendall. Johnny, my son. Dad! You, you found me. A touching reunion indeed. Too bad it must end so soon. You get that, Taurus? Aim for the ball at the top of the tower. But don't fire until I give the word. Aye, Skipper. You have been most helpful, Professor. But your usefulness has ended. No, Taurus. The tower has been hit. Don't throw that switch. You have activated the Sonite. When the load control is destroyed, the activator is still going. Quick, we must get out. 
the whole planet will explode. That's right. We only have seconds. Grab a space suit, Professor. Horace, Crystal, stand by to blast off. Aye, Skipper. Quick, look for the viewer. Oh, by Jiminy Gully. I wonder if Queen Zora escaped. I don't know, Chris, but our mission is accomplished. If I knew who you were, Space Angel, I could thank you properly. That's right, Dad, but no one knows who the Space Angel is. All well that ends well. Be sure and see the next exciting story with Scott McCloud, Space Angel.